iYouTubers, it's Pris again, and I'm trying to speak louder because I know the last video was kind of soft, and I want you to be able to hear me decent because it bites when it's not loud enough. So today I want to talk to you a little bit about this, How to Try Spirits. Um, it's written by Mary Garrison. And even though you've probably never heard of Mary Garrison, a lot of people use her theory or her, you know, what God showed her for deliverance um, in their ministry, but rarely have I heard anybody give her credits. That's probably because she's a woman. But it was written in 1976, so uh, right in the middle of the Jesus movement. And I want to share with you what she has to say because she goes through categories of spirits to show their characteristics which is very helpful and what the Lord showed her basically was that when Jesus ministered he didn't go down a long laundry list of demons as much as he did the main demons that are mentioned in the word and so she takes each of those and then she um, talks about the different spirits. So we're going to start with the spirit of bondage. Hey, hey, hey. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, the word says. But you have received the spirit of adoption where we cry, Abba, Father. That's in Romans 8, 15. And these are the manifestations that um, the Lord showed her of the spirit of bondage. Anguish of spirit, human spirit, from Exodus 6-9. Bitterness, Exodus 1-14. Satanic captivity, imprisonment, slavery, 2 Timothy 2-26. The blind, spiritually those in darkness, outer darkness, outside of Christ. Matthew 4-16, John 1-4 and 9, John 3-16-21. The bruise, the crush, the shattered life. The broken in heart, mind, soul, and body. And remember in the one that I just um, did on characteristics of demons, one of the things they do is torment and torture. And, and, and I mentioned that <clears throat> for demons of compulsion, that often in the lives of those people that are, in compul that are compulsive is a long history of not having enough love you know, from childhood, they're probably abused or neglected. So the, this matches with what she's saying about the broken in heart, mind, soul, and body. The oppressed, Acts 10, 38, and all addictions to habitually give oneself up or over to, as a constant practice or pursuing a bad habit like cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, food, spending, TV, it can be anything. Um, Avarice, excessive desire to gain and greed, coveting of wealth in order to hoard it. And a lot of times that's because the person feels that they've been, I'm adding as I go, um, that they've been gypped. They've been um, <clears throat> left out in life of, of what they needed. And that's basically true. But um, then comes this uh, rationalization for taking things into their own hands. And when I came to the Lord, uh, for example, I shoplifted. It was a compulsion. I didn't need to shoplift. I had a good job. I was a nurse. I had a two-year-old son. And um, I got caught, and that pretty much cut it off because I was too scared to get caught again. But I looked at myself after I got saved, and I thought, why was I doing that? Why, you know, did I feel like I you know, wanted to do that, and it's because I felt ripped off. I felt ripped off, never having had a, mo a mom who loved me, never having had a father. So um, then next is a uh, ambition, driving desire to attain honor, superiority, power, and money. So oftentimes they're high achievers, striving, striving, striving. Lust, excessive, sensuous, sexual desires. That can be one of the, you know, addictions. Um, compulsory sin, ropes that bind one to sin from Proverbs 5.22. And then compulsory subject, subjection and control by the principal sin and spirit, John 8.34. Servant, to carry out the wishes of the spirit, to obey him, whatever that spirit is. 
Romans 6.16, and then bound, inability to break free, Acts 8.23. Captivity under the power and dominion of another, Romans 7.23, and Luke 8.26-29. And overcome, subdued, made to be a servant of corruption, 2 Peter 2.19. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, the spirit itself of adoption beareth witness with our human spirit that we are the children of God, Romans 8, 15, and 16. Notice the solution given in the above scripture. She says, excuse me, ha, 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 ha. Two verses are talking about three spirits in the spirit world. We are commanded to react to each one in a specific way after trying them. Spirit of bondage is an evil spirit of slavery and satanic captivity. He must be bound and cast out. The spirit of adoption is a ministering spirit of God. He is to be loosed and sent forth to break all bondage and to bring one into sonship. So when you're dealing with a spirit of bondage, then you also release the spirit of adoption because the person feels like an orphan. And... and as that orphan spirit that people talk about. And then human spirit, deciding factor as to which of the two spirits will dominate. Okay. Then there's the spirit of fear she goes through. Now that one's fairly easy to see um, in a lot of people. Um, so I'm not going to go through every scripture, but I'll, I'll list the characteristics because they're very helpful when you're trying to figure out... Um, with people, you know, what what God wants to heal them of. So God has not given us a spirit of fear, it says, but a power, love, and a sound mind in 2 Timothy 1, 7. Manifestations of the spirit of fear. Uh, she says, look and see the definition in Webster's Dictionary. And then fright, torment, trembling, horror, dread, fear of death, faithless, Terror, a sense of danger, impending evil, foreboding, um, um, panic, and nightmares, night terrors, apprehension uh, to fear evil, anxiety, huge one that often stays with the person for many, many years to come, worrying about tomorrow, which is a lack of trust, basically, and then carefulness, unduly cautious, agitation, timidity, and that carefulness that I mentioned is is in a lot of things like in relationships and um, fearing to do certain things. Sometimes people have fear of success as much as they have a fear of failure. Okay. Tension, stress, heart attacks, fear of man, fear of poverty, fear of authority, phobias. There's five types of people who are oppressed by the spirit of fear and advance to the stage. I, I'm adding a few things just as I go, but um, one, hypercritical, like a critical spirit, judging uh, spirit. This condition is the manifestation of the spirit of fear. Known as depression, it makes one irritable so that he is rude and critical. He's often critical beyond reason, an over-rigid critic, um, over-exact, a perfectionist. And um, perfectionism is a stronghold that um, many, many have in, in ancient cultures. Um, you had to be perfect to, to be loved, you know. And, and I saw this in India. The Lord warned me about it before I even went to India. Um, you see it in a lot of Asian cultures. But it's also in European cultures, the German work ethic, for example. And um, I come from Dutch background in my mom's family. And so there's a lot of that perfectionism. And perfectionism... Um, is a stronghold pride, ego, vanity, frustration, um, irritation, and impatience, and um, and with it uh, a discontentment. You see a lot of discontentment with self and discontentment with others. All right, so hypercritical, she says, uh, makes one rude and critical, beyond reason, over rigid critic, over exact, a perfectionist. He may he may find people unbearable. He turns thoughts on himself becoming an introvert, introvert to turn inward, to turn thoughts on oneself, and then the perfectionism, unduly cautious, undue carefulness. When people are depressed, they grow to be too careful. 
and they become too cautious, often becoming perfectionists. They fear to spend money. They fear to, I, that's one thing I didn't have with um, the perfectionism. Um, they fear to enjoy pleasures and amusements. That's so true. They are in constant worry over whether they turned off the stove, locked the door. Migraines are often caused by tension and stress and constantly driving for perfection. And then there's the hermit, you know, somebody who just stays away from other people because he can't stand being around people because he's so sensitive um, because of the lack of love in their lives. And then re the recluse, one who withdraws and separates himself totally, especially from religious motives. And then four types of nervous disorders that could be caused by the spirit of fear. Neuroses, nervous breakdowns, neuralgia, neuritis, chronic anxiety. I could add a fifth. And um, the end result is the spirit of fear, definitely the manifestations of deaf and dumb spirit. Um, Jesus himself classified symptoms of a deaf and dumb spirit. And manifestations of a person that has become demented are paranoia, schizophrenia, delusions of grandeur, madness, insanity, manic, depressive, psychosis, melancholia. And now with schizophrenia, the lady who wrote, um, and her husband who wrote Pigs in the Parlor, have a whole um, revelation of what God showed them about schizophrenia as far as demons go. And highly recommend that book, Pigs in the Parlor. If you've never read it, it's really important to read. And um, she has a whole list of demons and, and also a, a revelation with her hands of uh, words of knowledge she got from the Lord about spirits and people um, who have schizophrenia. And schizophrenia is like going back between rebellion and rejection. Um, a lot of times people who have been rejected greatly then rebel towards authority because they've not been um, treated right. And it's um, really, really a good, a good revelation of, of um, the things that need to be deconstructed in people that have been through that and uh, have that problem. Okay, depression is when one is oppressed by outside influence. The spirit of fear is an oppressor. And believers are commanded to let the oppressed go free. So that's part of our job. We are to be, be deliverers of men, lovers of God and deliverers of men, as John Wimber used to say. The spirit of fear and voodoo. People who are ridden with fear can die from it. It can be shown in test animals that destructive fear and apprehension can destroy the body. And I'll stick in there. And that's why you see a lot of fear in the media. Fear, fear, fear. Fear about this and fear about that because... They want people to die of fear, uh, the enemy does. And so he's really playing his hand with, in this hour with trying to cause fear in people because they know that the stress and all of that will cause you know, people to, to um, panic. So people are, who are ridden with fear can die from it. It can be shown in test animals that destructive fear and apprehension can destroy the body. To kill a person by voodoo, all that is needed is to implant the dreaded idea into the victim's mind. As he feeds that emotion with terrifying thoughts, the pressure amounts to the place where damage occurs very fast. The person practicing voodoo uses a spirit of fear to implant ideas and, and to cause you know harm that way. And um, other demons like... Um, other demon power like to kill the victim of voodooism being oppressed by the evil spirits manifest worry fear terror fear of death and these spirits must be resisted by the blood of jesus and the holy spirit the name of jesus and by the word of god fearlessness is the mark of a true disciple i thought that's you know that's absolutely true but again we're in a progressive walk you know of getting um sanctified by the Lord. So fears are one of the deepest things, one of the first things to come in on our lives. So a lot of times it takes a long time for people to get total freedom from some of these fears, like fear of man and fear of authority and this kind of, you know, uh, anxiety and things like that, especially if they've been abused. So yes, fearlessness is the mark of a true disciple. The Bible teaches that we shall not fear um, other gods, such as demon gods, are strong men. We are to fear no evil. We are not to fear the reproach of men. We are not to fear man. We are not to fear suffering, prison, or tribulation. The fearful are listed among those who will be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Yeah. 
in Revelation 21.8. God weeded out those who were fearful and afraid from the army he had prepared to capture the Midianites um, in Judges 7.3 in the story of Gideon. And if you seek the Lord until he hears you, he will deliver you from all your fears, it says in Psalm 34.4. So according to the Bible, the only fear that man should have is the fear of the Lord. Fear of any other kind is evil. Fear is the enemy of God and man and the enemy of a warrior. The heart that is fully indwelt by Jesus should have no room for fear. Fear cannot exist where God's love is because perfect love casts out all fear. 1 John 4.18, fear is a destroyer of hope and faith. Jesus, speaking to the disciples, said, Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? When we have fully realized that our hope is in Christ, we will have no reason to fear because Christ will not fail. We know that our faith will grow as we study God's word and that our spirit can be fed and the seeds of faith and hope can be planted. As these seeds grow and produce a bountiful crop of God's love, and of hope in Jesus Christ, fear will have to leave. A person who is constantly tormented by a spirit of fear should make a study of love from the Bible. Because love is the opposite. It says perfect love casts out fear. And um, on my website, if you go to the bottom of the page, I'm going to end here. Uh, we'll go through the other spirits uh, in subsequent videos. But... Um, at the bottom of the page on discipleship, there's a link um, <clears throat> to some private stash of mine. <clears throat> and one of those, the FOTBH files, ha has all of Mike Bickle's teachings on the love of God in the Song of Solomon. And if you feed on that, it will help you to overcome fear. Now, the first time I listened through those, um, the first one is kind of basic background, but after that, they get really good in showing how much God loves us. And that's something people really need to know. There's too many people in the world that have not been loved, not been shown unconditional love. And so if you want to overcome fear, then you feed on the words of God that talk about his love for us or the examples in the Bible of his love, because there's a lot of examples in the Bible of how much he loved us. Look even at Lot. Lot was going to um, be destroyed and God went went and sent him and his family out of um, Sodom and Gomorrah. And um, even, even as the angels lead him out and his wife ends up, you know, turning to salt because she looked back and didn't obey the angels, he's say, I'm arguing with the Lord, well, can't I not go to the mountains, but can I, can I go to this other city? And I'm thinking, oy vey, are you a little crazy in the head that you're arguing with God and you're bargaining with him for a different way to go? But God does allow him to go to that other city and waits. He waited to crush Sodom and Gomorrah and, and destroy it with all the fire and sulfur and all that until Lot got to that other city. I mean, that's like, Wow. And he, he wasn't the sterling character, you know, that some people um, were in the Old Testament. Um, nobody was perfect, really, but Jesus. So, But still, it just gives you an idea that, hey, if we think and look at those things a little differently, we see that there's a whole lot of tolerance and, and patience on God's part with us. And we can count on that, too. Peter was always... A good example for me in the New Testament because um, he denied the Lord in the midst of the fray that was going on and seeing how horrible he was being treated and yet God forgave him and and God went out of his way Jesus went out of his way to come and appear to them again at the seaside so that he could say to Peter you aren't disqualified I'm still going to use you. Feed my sheep. So God bless you. This is the end of this one. Take care.